Hi guys, I'm Shane, and in this video I'm going to break down how I made this render for the Render Fan Weekly Challenge. I'm going to be using Keyshot, so you'll see how I create custom environments using the HDRI editor and physical lights, as well as some basic material creation and a tiny bit of post-production. So, let's get into it. As I mentioned already, this render was made for the Render Fan Weekly Challenge. This is a Discord set up to help people who are interested in visualization and product rendering set up by Will Gibbons. So head over to his YouTube channel to find out more about that. I'll leave a link below. So this week's theme was cinematic. We had to use a 3D model that was given to us of a syringe. And as soon as I saw it was a syringe, my mind instantly went to pandemics, vaccines and all that. This was when I decided I wanted to render an image that could be used for a movie poster or something like that for an apocalyptic film. So, now I have my initial plan in my head, I wanted to go out and come up with a plan of attack by gathering inspiration of other movie posters to see what works and what doesn't work. As I was going for that kind of apocalyptic theme, I thought it was a good place to start looking there. So that's what kind of decided my mood. I wanted it to be quite dark, quite mysterious and uh, maybe a little bit scary as well. In terms of composition, the Sonic poster was actually a big source of inspiration, even though it was a bit of a meme at the time. The way you've got the backlighting on the character, which makes this silhouette, but also leaves that element of mystery because you can't quite see what it is. And then the positioning is inspired by the Jaws poster, the way it's cut off at the head, so it doesn't show you the full scope of the animal, which again, it adds an element of mystery. And finally, because I knew I wanted it to be quite scary, quite dark, quite mysterious, I thought red would be a good colour to use. So that gives you a bit of an idea of how I plan my renders before I start them out. So now I'm going to take you through how I made the image in Keyshot. So as mentioned before, we were given the 3D model that we had to use. So you're going to want to import that, just leave all the settings the same. So in your lighting tab, you're going to want to change the lighting type to product. Usually I would start out with materials, but because this isn't photorealistic, what I'm going for, I actually started with composition. You're then gonna to wanna to move your model around, make sure it's snapped to the ground and get it in position. You see here, I'm just adding a new camera, playing around with the different focal lengths and inclination until I find one I'm happy with. And I'm also using the grid to make sure that it's aligned. For my image setup, I knew that I was going to be posting this only for Instagram, so my resolution is 1080 pixels by 1350 pixels, and I've got that set up already as a custom image style. My image style is done in the same ratio, but for some reason, my key shot only lets me extend out to 871 pixels. I don't know if this is just a case with mine or if I've just missed a setting somewhere. So now that everything's in position, what you'll see here is I'll change all the materials to a, a black shiny plastic. I link the two materials there by left clicking on one material and holding shift and right clicking while still holding shift on the next material that I want to link to because I knew that those two were going to be the same material. I then change the bottom part there to a cloudy plastic just because I know that's what it's going to be in the end. Um, and it's not seen here whilst I'm trying to sort my lighting out. Changing the material to a black shiny plastic makes it nice and easy to view your highlights whenever you're adding them. So next you want to gonna go into your environment tab and add a new environment. I'm just gonna zoom out quickly here and just look at the size and just reduce that a little bit. So you're gonna wanna edit the background and make it a very dark color. You see here, I make it 5% black and then I add quite a saturated blue. Next, you're gonna to wanna to add a pin and, and resize it so that's a rectangle. You're then gonna to wanna to move it into the rough position here. If you go back into your settings, you can change your background color to be black again. But again, I don't go for a pure black and I'd leave it at 
You're then going to want to add a little bit of fall off to your light so it's not so harsh. Just cycle through and see which one you like. I'm then going to hold Alt and Shift and drag my mouse across to duplicate that pin and drag it across so that it's almost symmetrical on the other side. You see me add another pin here, just playing around, seeing if there's any other lighting I like. I think I actually end up turning this one off and don't use it in the end. Now we're going to add the ground plane, so go to edit, add geometry, add ground plane and change the material to a metallic paint. And then go to play around with some of the settings, increasing the roughness. But most of this detail won't be seen once we add our depth of field. You see me add another camera here. This is something I like to do when I'm adding materials as it just makes it easier to view the whole environment without having to constantly move your camera. Next, I'm gonna go into the material graph and I wanna add a color gradient to the opacity to slowly fade out the ground plane. So I'll change the gradient type to spherical and play around with the size and scale. Connect that to the opacity node and you see here, when I switch back to my camera, you can see the effect that gives. And then we're gonna add a fractal noise texture for the bump. I set this quite large. Again, most of this won't be seen when we add the depth of field to our camera but it's something I still like to do just to give the background a little bit more interest to it so that not everything is flat and perfect. I'm then gonna use my geometry view, which you can get by pressing O on your keyboard, or by going into your window and then selecting a geometry view. And then add a plane, which I'm going to use as my spotlight. Change the material type to Spotlight. And in your geometry view, select the light and adjust the positioning. The reason I use the geometry view is it allows me to stay in my camera, but I can still move around the positioning of the light. You can see here, I just place it behind the object. Again, this isn't really lighting it. It's more lighting the background. This just helps to separate the syringe from the background change the power type to lumens as this gives more accurate lighting and increase the fall off a bit. So now I'm going to add some basic materials. I'm going to change the outside to a glass and add another fractal noise to the bump channel. Again, you can see here, it just adds some subtle imperfections to the reflections. Again, as I'm not going for photorealism here, I'm not going to add too much detail to these, just enough to create that little bit of a difference. I'm also just going for the basic glass here, not glass solid, just as it renders quicker. Add a little bit of roughness to the chrome material then adjust some of the settings for the cloudy plastic by reducing the transparency distance and increasing the cloudiness so it's got just that little bit of translucency and again you'll see me repeating the process of using the fractal noise this is something i'll do to most of my materials i'll always add a noise to the bump map just to give those subtle imperfections so now you see me hide the glass so that I can get into the plastic component in the middle. And again, you can see me adding a bump, but this time I use the noise texture. 
I reduced the scale and increased the magnitude and the bump height. And as you can see, what that does there for the little imperfections. And then select the little rubber part and I change that to a translucent medium. Apply the color and then play around with the settings just as I wanted it to have that little bit of translucency, but not too much. If you reduce the translucency, that will affect how far the light goes through the body. And then again, adding the bump map. So you can see here, I'm adding some more geometry, this time adding a cylinder. And this is because I wanted to have a bit of liquid in the end of the syringe. So you can see here, just playing around with the scale, just trying to get it to line up. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but as this is a stylized piece, that doesn't really matter. And then select the cylinder and change the material type to a liquid. Give it a nice red color and then play around with the settings for the transparency distance. Here you can see I'll add my depth of field. So turn it on and select your focus distance target as for the object and increase the f-stops to two. As you can see, this blurs out the background. I'm then gonna play with the intensity and temperature of the lights. With my main light having an intensity of 10, I'm going to go for a neutral temperature for my main light and a cooler temperature for my other light. You can see this creates that nice mix of colors on either side there, which makes it more visually interesting. I'm then going to take my light that's behind the object and make it quite warm. I then go into my image styles change it to photographic and play around with some of the tone mapping and it just reduces the amount of post-production work you have to do. I'll turn on my denoise slightly and add a bit of bloom. I'll increase the bloom threshold so that only the most reflective parts show bloom. can see here just going back through some of the materials and tweaking them a little bit and then I'll go into my render settings give it a name and render out the image with the with the clown pass with the clown pass selected this makes post-production a little bit easier as you can select the materials that you've used a lot easier in terms of resolution I'll do 1080p by 1350 as I know it's being used for Instagram and I'll let it run for about 500 samples. I'm now going to show you how I added the fog. So insert a cube. This is going to house the fog. Change the material type to a scattering medium and you're going to want to use a VDB texture to control the fog. The ones I'm using here were made by Liam Martin these are available for a free download on the Render Weekly website. So you're going to want to drag that in and connect it to your density texture. Play around with the scale and density. I always have my density very high whilst I'm getting it in position just because it makes it easier to see. You see here I'm just positioning it. I wanted it to wrap around the syringe so you can see me just positioning it here. Once I'm happy with the position I'll reduce my density and my transparency distance and play around with the color until I get something I'm happy with. You'll see I also changed the scattering directionality. This affects how the light reacts. As you can see, when I go lower, it makes the smoke darker, and when I go higher, it makes it brighter. 
So again, just making some tweaks to the color. And you'll see, I go back into my image tab and I'll increase the denoise to something quite high like 0 0.6. This will help smooth out the fog. We'll then render this again, give it a different name, and I'll let it run for at least a thousand samples. The scattering medium is quite heavy on your computer. So next, we're gonna combine these two in Photoshop. So you have your two images, with smoke and without smoke, and all we're gonna do is make sure that the image you rendered without the smoke is on top, and change the blend mode to either lighten or screen. This will take all the bright parts of the image and overlay it on top of the one below, so we still get our nice highlights and everything coming through while still keeping the smoke. I'm then gonna add a levels adjustment layer and play around with them to add a bit more contrast back in. And you can see here, we've got a bit of stepping going on. So I'll just smooth that out using the smudge tool. This is just one instance where post-production can come in handy. My post-production process is a little bit more complex than this. And in the next video, I'll break down how I post-process this image to turn it into the fully fledged poster you'll see on the next screen. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to ask me down in the comments. Make sure you check out Will's page for more information on the Discord and subscribe for more.